Uh, welcome to part six, and this is the last part, unless uh, I get some questions, and I'll do a part seven. Uh, first thing I want to start off with is uh, I used a, a, a diode and resistor, a, a Zener diode and resistor, to uh, create the 12, 13 volts I need. I use these little modules, and right now, if you look, I'm at 16 volts, and the little LED is on. This is working. These come in sheets. I was paying like 67 cents each for these. Price goes all over the place. I got them off AliExpress. You know, break off how many you need. I put, uh, you know, the little, there's little tabs here, and I put, uh, a capacitor and uh, you know that provides me a stiff lead so I can come up from a board or attach some other leads to it but uh, these are AC it's totally isolated between input and output so you can connect these anywhere and uh, they work to a very low voltage but I wouldn't use them when you're you know less than 40 or 50 volts They uh, eliminate a lot of problems. So you put this in, and you can go almost any voltage. And, of course, you use a 10-turn pot. You know, that's for when you don't want to calculate. That'll cover a wide range, too. But uh, these are really nice. But the uh, resistor and zener, they have the highest voltage immunity. And when you're making the resistor, the dropping resistor, it's better to have two or three resistors in series uh, because every resistor has a breakdown voltage and that can vary between 200 and 300 volts. I have some which are 2000 volts uh, breakdown, but those are very special. Uh, next thing is uh, these little FETs. You know, like I said, they're rated at 55 volts uh, these tested a breakdown of 71, so really wouldn't use them over 60, and that would be open circuit. But there is a, a, a FET in the same package, an RF4321. Isn't that a nice number? You know, I used to work, uh, I used to have a zip code, and it was kind of the neatest zip code. It was 12345. And uh, when people would call up and they'd want to know my address and I'd tell them that, they'd think I was being an asshole. But uh, that was it. You know, there's only one of those in the country. Uh, today I want to do a temperature sensor. And that's what we have right here. This is uh, seven diodes. And these can be IN4007. Uh, any silicon diode except uh, shot keys because they're lower voltage. I guess you could use a lot more. But I have these uh, out on my solar panel. Uh, I just have a little piece of uh, black painted uh, sheet metal. And I put these inside of a heat shrink tubing. So, uh, yeah, you can go up with three or four diodes and heat shrink that and then come down and do a covering on the other whole thing. I use hot melt glue uh, uh, stuck in there to uh, seal up everything. There is heat shrink tubing that has, uh, it's called double wall, and that has the uh, hot melt glue built in and really nice for sealing. I use that for a lot of things. When you, uh, getting back to these uh, FETs, if you go higher voltage, the clearances on the circuit board aren't really that good. So, yeah, you get you get up around 90, 100 volts. Uh, if you replace these, you know, clean up, clean up the spaces in between, and then and then coat it with fingernail polish. Otherwise, uh, some dirt condensation can get in there, and it'll start arcing. These clearances aren't really good for higher voltages. 
but it'll work if you put some uh, conformal coating on there and uh, fingernail polish works good for that and uh, when you use the sensor cable I'd use uh, something like uh, shielded microphone cable if you could uh, if you're out somewhere where you don't have a lot of uh, radio stations and stuff like that uh, it won't really matter uh, it's pretty insensitive but well, let's get to the circuit what you have to do and here if you remember when we started uh, there was just a 2k resistor there and a 2k here and that made a voltage divider of 2.5 volts because this is a 5 volt reference and then we pulled out that uh, extra 2k resistor there so now we had two 2k resistors in parallel which made 1k and I told you there'd be a purpose for that and the purpose is is if you just attach on to pin number one and there's a nice place you can solder there because they have a capacitor and the old resistor used to be there here's your string of diodes the band goes towards ground and uh, that's why I left this one ground terminal here to connect right on. And solar panels are basically just a big string of diodes, and that's what this is. And as the temperature changes, uh, when the diode gets colder, the voltage gets higher. And so, yeah, your solar panel will track that. And it's not exact, uh, but it's close enough. If you adjust the voltage uh, seasonally, uh, these will cover a lot of the temperature differences during the day. That's pretty good. So, I don't know what else we have to cover. Uh, if you're in a real cold climate, you may want to use six, six diodes in series instead of seven. So let's uh, do a little demo here. I'm going to increase the voltage. So here we are up at 40 volts again. And you can see we're just uh, clocking along. Let me reduce that a little bit so our pulses are just a little narrower. So yeah. Yeah, so it's just barely working. And I'm going to get out my heat gun. So we're at about 40.8, 0.6, something like that. We'll heat, use the heat gun. Warm this up a little bit. You can see the pulses got wider. And the voltage got lower. Now these aren't really that hot. Solar panel will be a lot hotter than that, but you can see has it, uh, how it changes. Now I got a 60 volt uh, array in my backyard for my water heater. And the other day it was really cold out and uh, my voltage was uh, the panel's spec at uh, 60 volts. And uh, my power point was 64 volts. And, uh, you know, this tracks well enough. You don't have to have a, a, a current and voltage uh, tracking type thing uh, for MPPT. There's lots of different methods. I mean, uh, that type of method works good if you have a lot of shading. Uh, you know, if you're going to shade, have shade. You can't do water heating really, you know, it's uh, not going to be very effective. And my whole designs are uh, about operating something like this in parallel with a charge controller. And you can't have two MPPTs uh, competing against each other. And so my main interest is diversion. 
So, I mean, we could put a microprocessor on that, but these are so simple and uh, they're within 5% effective of what a uh, full MPPT would do. So, Again, yeah. this is really nice. And that little slope, this is it charging back up. And so the flatter you make that, the more efficient it is. Uh, capacitors have to discharge a little bit, or you have to have a really large capacitor bank. You know, it's your choice. But uh, having a 5% drop in voltage is uh, perfectly acceptable cost-effective, uh, and that's why it's done that way.